He's not the fastest moving guy in a hockey sweater, but Elmer Locke knows how to handle a stick and find the back of the net. Oh, I'm a stiff, my God. He retired from the Montreal Canadiens in 1954. Yet Locke can still draw a crowd of fans, many of them too young to have seen him play. Thank you. Here's Elmer Locke. Elegant Elmer, as he was once known, still excites fans, people who want to meet a living hockey legend. Thank you very much. In the 1940s and 50s, Locke was one-third of the punchline, the magical combination of Toe Blake, Maurice Richard, and Locke. Together, they were the winningest trio in the NHL. The tough guys were the best players, and you had to be very talented, and very tough, and a little mean to get along at the top, and he was all of the above. Those were the glory days, but when Locke first arrived in Montreal, the Habs were a loser of a team. In 1940, the Montreal Canadiens were on the verge of going out of business. The Canadiens had just finished the 1939-40 season with a record of 10 wins in 48 games, the worst record the team has ever compiled, one of the worst records that any team in the National Hockey League ever compiled. Then two things happened. The Habs hired Elmer Locke, the kid from Saskatchewan, to join the team. And they brought in Dick Irvin Sr. as coach. He took the lousy team with nine rookies and turned it around, starting by giving them a rule book to memorize. He gave us a rule book and about two weeks later he gave us a test. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't even opened it. <laughs> Lackey Sinclair. He learned the rules and went to work, playing hard and being hit hard. Some called him Locke the Unlucky for all the injuries he suffered. There were the two broken jaws and the weird contraptions called bird cages the doctors used to hold his face together. And the severed veins, the broken bones, and a multitude of broken noses. I was reminiscing the other day about my nose. It tells me how it's <laughs> the most famous of the Beak Beatings, 1953. Locke scored in overtime. That goal won the Stanley Cup for the Canadiens. An excited Maurice Richard jumped into Locke's arms. What you don't see here is Richard hit Elmer so hard he broke Locke's nose for the seventh time. You represent the club. These days, Locke dismisses the injuries as no big deal. And no big deal is how he treats fame. In 1948, Locke was the original winner of the Art Ross Trophy for earning the most points in a season. Yet last week was the first time he saw the trophy. He never bothered to visit the Hall of Fame to see his name in silver. Elmer Locke, one of the game's great playmakers. Number 16 was the strategist. Maurice Richard was the star. Everyone remembers Richard scored 50 goals in 50 games, but it was Locke named most valuable player that year, and Locke who set Richard up. Homestead ahead to Elmer Locke, a pass in the wing to Richard, he picks it up, he's going in on goal, he should be scored. Maurice Richard would have fewer people checking him because Elmer had taken the defenders off into the corners with him, and that's one of the great reasons why Rocket Richard had as many great opportunities. So did Locke feel overshadowed by the Rocket? Maybe, not that he'd ever admit it. Well, that's what they paid me, to do it. You know, I wasn't looking for a pat in the bag. But, say some fans, Locke deserves much more than a pat on the back. He needs to be recognized. He needs his due, 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 due respect, due time. It's not that Locke is forgotten by the team. He was at the 100th anniversary celebration last year. And at the Hockey Hall of Fame, Elmer Locke is revered as a player who helped build the Canadians and elevated the game of hockey. Elmer Locke's name keeps going, coming up and coming up because of toughness, because of passion, because of a gentlemanly off the ice. And that's why he's an honored member in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Oh, no. But that's still not enough, says Dave Stubbs. I think that the number 16, I think that Elmer's name should be hanging from the rafters of the Bell Center as well. Locke admits he's been hurt to see other players' numbers retired, but his name, his sweater, is not among them. Where do you want it? 
Elmer Locke would like the same recognition, but if it never happens, he'll still be a wonderful reminder of a time when hockey was about passion, not money. A reminder of a time when the Montreal Canadiens were at the top of their game. Lynn Robson, CBC News, Point Claire.